Gospel today is from Matthew chapter 2. Now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem, who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled, because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who are seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. The Gospel of the Lord. O oh, holy child of Bethlehem, Descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. Amen. Is it just, uh, is it just me, or did uh, Christmas kind of sneak up on us and New Year's and all the and all the stuff that it just seems to go faster every year, every year. Uh, and I think, well, uh, I don't know if I'm ever ready. <laughs> we know it's coming, right? It came. We, we, we celebrated it. And here we are in a new year already. But I remember uh, years ago when I was, uh, was uh, learning how to fly an airplane. Now, there's a point at which you have to fly the airplane by yourself with no one else in it except you. And, uh, and I asked my instructor, and I go, well, when, 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 when do I fly solo? And uh, she told me, her name was Leisha, she says, I'll, I'll tell you when you're ready. If you, if you wait till you're ready, you'll never be ready, because you'll always, you, you'll just, you just, I'll tell you when. I'll tell you when. And I take, I've adopted that same philosophy when I teach people how to do the same thing. I said, don't worry, when you're ready, I'll let you know. It's out you go, <laughs> or out I go, and then and they go. Uh, <laughs> stay in the plane, I always tell them. Just stay in the plane, you'll be fine. Um, it's something different when you look over there, you're by yourself, when you're used to someone else being with you. You look over there, it's just an empty chair, and you're flying around. Well, uh, ready or not, that's the time comes when you're ready, and you do it. Ready or not, the new year is here. Happy New Year again. Uh, no doubt there will be, and I'm, I know there was already on, on television, there's always the, uh, the year of review, you know, the best movies of 2016, the best books, uh, fiction, nonfiction, you know, the best play, all the different top ten things, and, and the biggest news events of uh, news stories. And there are many things uh, this last year maybe even this new year, <laughs> that caught you off guard, that caught people off guard. Uh, I found this picture, I, I just Google images, uh, I just said, caught off guard, and I found this one. <laughs> you see the movie The Revenant? I thought, yeah, he's not quite ready for that grizzly bear, you know, but some, sometimes it's the events in our lives that make us feel like this guy. Where did this bear come from? I wasn't ready for that. What, what am I 
supposed to do? Uh, and maybe, maybe it's not a physical threat like this grizzly bear, but it's, it's another kind of threat that you don't, you can't, no one else can see it, but you can. And it feels like this <laughs> in the inside, but no one else can see it. And everybody's like, well, what's wrong with you? What's with, well, I was just, I wasn't ready for that. No big deal. Well, inside your comes this bear. What does it mean to be caught off guard? And then in the face of unexpected events, obviously in 2016 there are events that caught people off guard, surprised people, you know, there always will be. How do we respond to them? That is the key. How do we respond uh, to stressors in our lives and things that we just, that are our plan? Our gospel today uh, gives us a background in how, uh, how, how, do, how do two different views or approaches uh, to events you don't foresee, or you're not ready for, or that catch you off guard. There are those who are ready and receptive uh, to the way God is working, and it might not fit into their plan, but they're, they're open to it. And others who are not, who resist What's the difference? Who's ready? Who's not? The two ways of responding, resistance, uh, violence, or trust and obedience, those are the two ways. And the first example that we get, we get word of, and it's mentioned here at first, is this guy here, Herod, Herod the Great. He is not ready. He resists God's work in the world. And he does whatever he can to stop it from happening. It's not going to work, but he does it nonetheless. Uh, we, we get on the tail end of the story, the Christmas story, when Herod first learned uh, that the wise men, uh, the, the wise men first came uh, to Jerusalem, they went to where the capital city was because they're looking for the king. I mean, so you go to Jerusalem. And they ask Herod, well, we're looking for the king to be born, the, the boy born to be king of the Jews. And Herod's like, well, I'm king. Who, who, what are you talking about? Well, well no, we, we can figure it out in the stars and we've been following him. And, and Herod got nervous. In fact, Matthew says the whole city of Jerusalem was afraid. Herod and his, his men, his, his, the smart guys, the muckety-mucks. And they started searching the scriptures, and they indeed uh, found out that the chief priests, the scribes together, he said, well, where is this king supposed to be born? They said, oh, he's supposed to be born in Bethlehem. And so he sent for the wise men, and he says this to them. Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay homage. Homage is a fancy word for worshiping him and giving him a credit where credit is due. Well, uh, they set out and followed the star where it stopped, and we know what happens next, right? Uh, the three kings, and this is a, a Chinese version of that, bringing the three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And, and here's another version of that. We have this in the manger scene, right? We know this. We know this part. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Well, we know what gold does. Frankincense, uh, incense, they used it in, in sacrifices. They put it on a burner, a charcoal burner. You throw it, it's like a tree resin, very fragrant. And uh, myrrh was used for uh, anointing people, very, very expensive perfume, also for burial. Kings got those gifts. Solomon got these gifts. And Jesus gets these same gifts. But then they're warned in a dream. Don't go back to Herod. Go back to your own country by another way, another road. And when they left Mary and Joseph and Jesus, that's what they did. That's where our gospel picks up. When they had left, and that's, that's what we hear, they are those guys. When they left, or the 
wise men came. Uh, usually in the manger scene, they don't have the slaughter of the innocents. I haven't seen one of those yet. It's kind of not very Christmassy. It kind of, it kind of wrecks the mood. But that is what Matthew wants to record for us. Uh, and Luke's gospel, it's interesting. Luke, Luke has the shepherds, the people that are on the outside margins, the angels, and everyone's kind of happy about it. Matthew connects it to the greater society and the powerful, and they don't like it at all. It's upsetting their plan, their, their agenda. Herod, infuriated, has all the children in and around Bethlehem killed, who are two years old or under. Why? Well, that's kind of how they figured how old this, this child was. And uh, this is from 1611, by a guy named Peter Paul Rubens. And uh, it's this is called The Slaughter of the Innocents. Is there anything more horrible, an image, then, in the birth of a child, we hear and we read about children dying. Uh, there's a cost. Herod wants to control his world. How God should work, where God should work, and what God should do in the world. And he doesn't like what God is up to. He's resistant to it. And he reacts with violence. That's the first example bad example, but the primary one. Probably the best bad example there is. The second example is the rest of the story. What is Joseph going to do? He's got to protect the family. He's head of the family. And he's, and he's going to do that. He is uh, St. Joseph. Okay? The protector of travelers. The protector of the house the protector of the Holy Family. He didn't know the future. We heard about Joseph before, how, how he had certain plans. He was engaged to be betrothed and engaged to be married, to marry, but plans changed. And he was, he had plans to, uh, to divorce Mary, to, to keep it quiet, because it wasn't his child, and that's the way it was back in those days. But an angel said, no, 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 don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Don't be afraid to do that. She's was child by the Holy Spirit. You will name him Jesus. He will save his people from their sins. What does Joseph do? He does what the angel commands. He responds, not with fear, not with anger, but with trust and obedience. And the angel told him not to be afraid uh, to take Mary as his wife. He listened. He obeyed. He didn't know what path God was leading him on. He only knew that God was leading him. He didn't know the path. But he, but he knew that God was leading him. It's interesting. In the, first, uh, in the first couple of chapters in Matthew, who gets more airtime? Mary or Joseph? Who gets more? Who, gets more, who, who do you hear more about? Joseph. There isn't a single word, however, recorded in the Bible, recording what Joseph said. Anyway, we don't hear anything that Joseph said. What do we hear? Well, we read and we hear about what Joseph did. Uh, the strong, silent type, I guess. He put his trust and God and followed uh, God's leading. Now, in the Bible, in Matthew especially, dreams are very important. Dreams show up, or angels show up in, in visions and dreams, and Joseph listens to them. He puts his trust in God. It's not a very Christmassy story. He's just born, and now he has to run for his life, or in this case, be carried. Uh, Jesus. Mary and Joseph have to go to a foreign country, Egypt, uh, living off the hospitality of, of strangers. And yet there was another Joseph in the Bible who also went to Egypt and uh, rescued his people uh, through that. 
it's not doesn't seem to be a very a very Christmassy story. Uh, the, the story we have today, and yet that is the essence of the Christmas story. It's the essence of the good news of great joy for all people. God does not stay up in heaven, isolated from the world. God is here with us on earth. God is right in the middle of our world. God comes down to us in Jesus. And, 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 and in Jesus, God is up to his neck with us in all the uncertainties, all the times and things that catch us off guard. God is with us. Here's another portrayal of the flight of Egypt uh, and having the angels, uh, God's messengers, because again, Matthew, Matthew keeps talking about the angels appear to Joseph in a dream and, they, and uh, he listens to in the word In the words of Hebrews, that we read today. It says this. It was fitting that God, from whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. It is fitting. This tells us that you and me, it is fitting. It's God's purpose. God's love, God's purpose is Persistent, steadfast. It proves to us his commitment to us and that he had to suffer for us. The book of Hebrews is writing about Jesus as, as our high priest, as the one who, who offers himself as the sacrifice. It's fitting that he would make the pioneer of our, of our salvation. Perfect through suffering. Jesus suffered even as a child. He had to, be, he had to be escaped to, to save his life. But that suffering, that, uh, that example of what God is willing to do for us is what the author of Hebrews is trying to, trying to remind us of. Why is God doing this? Because he cares. He has compassion. And his love is steadfast and persistent. We can depend on it. So no matter what the... Uh, what the Herods of this world can do. No matter what the, the things that catch us off guard, no matter how fast things change, no matter uh, what tragedies can come, no matter how uncertain uh, our futures may seem, no, no matter how certain they may seem, either one, one thing is certain. We have a God who has invested his whole life in us in our world, and for us. And that God has promised, uh, as he has shown through this uh, the story of, of Jesus, of his parents being led and guided through terrible and perilous times, that he will continue to support us, he will continue to guide us, he will continue to strengthen us, he will continue to lift us up and to lead us. Just like this through wherever we may go. Let us pray. Our Lord, you have indeed called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Let us go out with courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is guiding us, and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay.